Hey, it's Todd Newton. Listen, my friend, this is our 100th episode of the podcast. And before we start the razzle dazzle here, before we get into the great talk that keeps you talking all day, I just want to say thank you on behalf of myself and Maria. Thank you for being a part of the family. Thank you for downloading and subscribing and sharing wherever you get this podcast, where if you watch us on YouTube or Apple Podcasts, just a million thank yous. We love, we love doing this show with you, and it wouldn't be possible without you. So here's to the first hundred and to at least a hundred more. Welcome to the Todd Newton Morning Show Podcast. Featuring weekly highlights from the most talked about show on the FM dial. Now, with the talk that will keep you talking. Here's Todd Newton and Maria Todd. Now, neither Maria nor myself is on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter. Are you on Twitter? You have one? Just I don't am, but use I don't it. post. I just, yeah, I just look at other people's posts. Who's the most uh, interesting person you follow over there. You probably get a lot of your news from there, don't you? Some. I, I, pro- I, I spend a lot of time following The Rock, uh-huh. Lenny Kravitz, and everybody he likes. And... <laughs> you love Shut you up. That, you Just love, leave me alone. You love you that Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> Shut up. What's his profile picture He's like? He's my man. He just doesn't know it. Yeah. What's his profile picture look like? I don't know, but I know the one on my phone is the one where he doesn't have dreadlocks or a perm or anything. It's just uh, his hair. Uh huh. I remember one time back in uh, this is a, a old radio story. This would have been in the in the early '90s. Lenny Kravitz came by our radio station. You know, he was doing a little concert, so he came by for an interview. And uh, this was when he had the dreadlocks. And I remember he came in and he was wearing a Los Angeles Kings hockey jersey, and. Uh, I had to keep turning the level. I had to keep potting his mic hotter and hotter, you know, turning the levels up because he's he's so soft spoken. You know, he's yes, so- he's very soft spoken. And I'm like, man, ain't nobody can hear you. And this was I, I think Are You Gonna Go My <laughs> Way came. You know, he had one. Oh, song. yeah. He had one song out at the time. And and back then, you know, the most interesting thing to talk to him about was how his mother was the the. Uh, the woman from the Jeffersons, you know, Roxy, Roxy Roker. Roker. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Twitter users, Helen Willis, Helen Willis, uh, Helen and Tom Willis. That's right. Well, Twitter users were asked to share the weirdest dates they've been on. I'm guessing Lenny Kravitz probably did not respond to this, uh, but here are some of the results. And I think you'll get a kick out of this, Maria. One Twitter user said, well, my date let me out of the car to wait on the curb while she parallel parked. And after three failed attempts, she got upset and just drove off and left me there. I had to walk home. What? She got so ticked. What? Because she couldn't parallel park. Oh, my God. (laughs) Uh, Come on. Another response. Bad date. Weird date, I guess. Guy says, once I took a girl out and we were walking by a river in my city. So we took a picture together with the water behind us. And it turns out she posted the photo, but she cropped me out and captioned it with much needed alone time. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's outstanding. Oh, wow. Outstanding. Wow. Oh, here's one that says, uh, one time I took a lady to the movies and during the movie, she kept looking at the person sitting behind us. Turns out her dad was sitting behind us the entire time. Dad Thank God he didn't know. <laughs> and uh, yes. here's one more. Again, Twitter users asked to share the weirdest dates that they've been on. And if you responded to this on Twitter, by all means, email us and let us know what your response was. You can email us uh, from our website, ToddNewtonMorningShow.com. Here's one that says his family, I guess the, the guy that uh, she went on a date with, his family owned and ran a funeral home. Did not have an issue with that, but my date spent the latter part of dinner telling me what kind of makeup techniques he would use on me if I died. <laughs> oh, how's, check. How's that? Yeah, check, please. How's that for dinner conversation? You know, oh my God! You know what would look great on you if uh, if you were laying in a <laughs> casket? Wild. Can you hear my cats? Listen to these two. They're howling. It's making the story scary. Lordy, lordy. Todd Newton Morning Show with Maria Todd. 
He's the tan, tattooed connoisseur of conversation, and he's back. It's the Todd Newton Morning Show with Maria Todd. Uh, in the restaurant business, were you ever a server or bartender or anything like that? No. Neither was I. The closest I came, I was a pizza delivery boy back in 1986. That lasted about three months. That's, that's as close as I came. I would imagine that it probably has its ups and downs, you know? I mean, the pros being that you make a lot of money in tips, a lot of cash. Yeah. Uh, you probably meet a lot of interesting people. It, it, sometimes you see people in restaurants or bars or you, you meet somebody who works in a restaurant bar and they're really good friends with their coworkers. They all go out together. They would be nice. If you, I'd like to work at a, at a nice beachside restaurant in Key West. If I, if I was a server, that's where I'd want to be. You know, just looking at the ocean all day. I like what I like the way you think. Bringing people pina coladas, yeah. But I would imagine all your uh-huh. all your customers would be happy. That's right. That's right. But I would imagine the downside would be you're kind of at the mercy of your customers as far as the gratuities go. I mean, you can only be so friendly, right? You'd be as friendly as you can, and the rest is up to them. Nothing's guaranteed. Yeah, that's true. A uh, restaurant worker last month, her name is uh, Shirley Rose. And she works at the Kowloon Restaurant in uh, Saugus. Saugus, where is Saugus? Do we know where uh, Saugus? I don't know. Where is Saugus? Uh, anyway, she's... Uh, she's it sounds like Wisconsin or Minnesota or somewhere like that. She's worked there a while, and her, her customers, they absolutely love her. They love, they love, uh, where is it? Oh, it's in Massachusetts. It's in Massachusetts. Saugus is in Massachusetts. She works at the Cowlick. Well, you can see that I don't know anything. (laughs) Close enough. Close enough. One of her customers loved her so much, Maria, that as a tip, instead of just leaving cash, they bought her a lottery ticket. Now you can see where this you can see where this story's going. And I've I've done that before. I've I've done that, uh, you know, as a stocking stuffer for friends. You know, you buy them a couple of five dollar tickets and hope oh, yeah. for the, hope for the best. I put them in birthday cards. Right. It's a fun little cool little thing, and um, you know, it's never paid off for me, but it sure did for uh, Shirley Rose, who, by the way, is seventy nine years old, and she was not and still working, still working. Just loves it. You know, this is probably her identity. You know, this is probably her social Gets interaction. Gets out of the house. Right. Yeah. And she wasn't scheduled to work on Friday, May 27th, but one of her coworkers said, hey, can you come in and cover for me? And, of course, Shirley being Shirley said I'd be happy to. She waited on one of her regular customers, and the customer left her the lottery ticket as a tip. And do you know that Miss Shirley Rose won $2,000 with that ticket? Oh, my God. $2,000. Now, listen, as, wow. th- as thrilled as we are for Miss Shirley Rose, imagine if you're the coworker who asked her to cover for you, and that, was, that, was, that would have been your table, would have been your tip Man. <laughs> if you just not called in on Friday, May 27th. Isn't that something? I hope it was good. Yeah, yeah, whatever you were doing. I hope you it might was- just stayed home. I'm sleeping in. Forget it. I'm not going to work today. Listen, I love watching Judge Judy, but I, I ain't going to give up $2,000 oh, to watch my court show. So no. we are super happy for Miss Shirley Rose. And if you're ever in Saugus, Massachusetts, make sure you swing by that Kowloon restaurant and give Miss Shirley a nice hello. I bet she's got a nice big smile on her face. Uh, join us online. Who wouldn't after two grand? <laughs> Join us online, won't you? Our website is ToddNewtonMorningShow.com. Thank you for being part of the conversation. Subscribe now so you never miss a beat. For more Todd and Maria, visit ToddNewtonMorningShow.com. The Todd Newton Morning Show podcast. Great talk that will keep you talking. Produced by the host with the most, LLC. All rights reserved.